Tonight on the podcast, we have Punisher and Tomb Raider, The Crucible and Into the Badlands, Destiny 2 and Day 5. All this and so much more on the official Team the Bob podcast number 210. Come join us, why don't you? Hello and welcome to the official Team to Bob podcast number 210. I'm your host tonight, Craig, otherwise known as Sin76, and with us tonight we have Randall, sometimes. Yeah. There he is. We have James. Hey, what's up? Hello. And from across the great waters, we have Sir Jamie. Yep, I'm here again. Hello. There he is, folks. <laughs> There the he is, like you're exciting, showing to the people. The most exciting British person you'll ever meet. <laughs> ever. Okay. <laughs> but Jamie, At least for um, us, anyway. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so Jamie, did you have any more run-ins with any type of rodents or birds on or your way home today? Or the law. Or law. Well. <laughs> what law? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ain't like, um, same LA County. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really get any rabbits, you don't really get any birds, you don't really get cops that all that often. It's why it's like a rare occurrence, really. Hmm. So the way the roads are built, like when they place a road down, they like they don't just chuck a road down, they like really make they really work hard to make the road like full on man made and kick out anything nature. No, so really? when they so when nature sneaks back onto the road, you'll be like, oh, somebody didn't get the memo. Oh. <laughs> but no, yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen any animals on the road in a living state. Oh, well, oh, all right. That's always a sad. Plenty of dead, plenty of dead <laughs> badgers, though. We don't need no sticking badgers. I oh, don't know where they come from, because... No. Never in my life have I seen a live badger, but I've certainly seen quite a few dead ones. Are, you sh- are they badgers or golfers? <laughs> um, well, the world may never know. Well, they don't really have clubs on them, so... Okay. Alright. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. Golfers. Golf courses. Though to be fair, in the laws of averages, some of them probably do have balls. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he makes a very valid point. <laughs> uh, how um, how are you, James? I'm all right. My sinuses are slightly cloggy thanks to the wonderful allergy state that I live in. But Beautiful. yeah, but I, I I can't beat Jamie as far as the um, animals thing. Although I think I am being stalked by a woodchuck. A woodchuck. You say well, stalked. Better- Yes, stalked. Because when I, I li- w- yeah. when I lived at my old house, we had a woodchuck that would always come into our yard and even made a hole like literally right next to my house that I filled in numerous times. Oh. And we can't. And you know, we moved. We never gave him a forwarding address or anything like that. A couple of months after we had moved, and mind you, my wife has lived in the town that we live in now for since. 99 so almost 18 years never once has she ever seen a woodchuck all of a sudden a couple of months after we move in what do i see pop up out of, from under my shed friggin woodchuck so they it just took, it, it it just took a while for it to find me but i'm fairly positive this is the one that lived in hamilton oh. <laughs> so they're they're just really following you around i i believe so Interesting. Very interesting. So let's, um, because you know we're going to talk about it. Uh, so how's everyone's destiny time going? I, I, I don't know what I have done to get in the good graces of Aaron Jeebus again, but Uh-oh. he likes me, and I don't want to jinx that. <laughs> uh oh. What uh, what has he been giving you? Uh, I've gotten pretty lucky on 
exotic roles. At least I think I have. Randall most probably say no, that sucks. But <laughs> um, I got a a random exotic drop, and it was off of a legendary engram too. Uh, really? An exotic, yeah. I got an exotic drop off of I want to say Ikora, which was a two seventy five graviton lance. That's actually a pretty neat uh, pulse rifle, I must say. It's not it's not on par with the sunshot, but it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I got some weird trials of Osiris pulse rifle. Um, damn, I can't think of the name of it. I think it's like the. Viridian wing or something like that. But it basically looks like it was ripped from ancient Egypt if they had pulse rifles. Um, <laughs> the rolls on it aren't that bad, but last night I picked up the uh, Skyburners Annex, which is the new scout rifle that looks like the Cabal weapon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's got some nice rolls on it. It's you, you get a stronger shot when you aim down sights, and when fighting the Cabal, you're able to. Not only does it ha- I have full auto, and I think, but I think it only perks when you're fighting Cabal. But it has an ability where it actually penetrates phalanx shields. Really? Yeah. So huh. that's most probably going to be one of the musts for the raid. I have a feeling. That's cool. Yeah. How's uh, your Destiny time going, Jamie? Um. It's good. It's good as well as it can. I've I've kind of hit that little roadblock where like I do the little things I could do every day, but I see to I don't really seem to get anything that like helps me get stronger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I've got all my I've got all my individual armor stuff to like two sixty five light level, and then all I keep getting is two sixty five stuff. So oh. I was like, okay, I'm doing the best I can. Just <laughs> give me, just give me what's something. The, um, just what's chuck the something max at light me level? Help. Max light level. I think it's 300? I think it's 305 or something. Something odd. Hmm, that is an odd number. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but the only way to get the end, the, like the, the top gear right now is, I think, Crucible, Nightfall. Yep. I want to say I think the milestones will do it, um, and the raid. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some of those milestones should pop out a couple of good things. And the raid started already, right? Yeah, I think so. Nice. I'm sure Randall's already done it like six times. So, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, if I'm going to be honest with you, I've been stalking his achievements, and no, he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. Now who's the woodchuck? Mm. <laughs> um. I mean, I've been waiting because, because like that's the thing with Randall. Like Randall is the kind of like it's the carrier of the uh, group kind of. Like, <laughs> once, once Randall does it, you can just be like, "Hey, Randall, do you help me out?" And then, he, and then he'll just whistle, and like four other people show up. <laughs> he calls Bloomer. He calls Tony. He calls Anger. So he's like a he's like a video game superhero. For for, sorts. for for Destiny for Destiny yeah. For Randall Destiny. Randall is the official team the Bash Sherpa. Yeah. Hmm, that could work. I'm pretty Although, sure. If, I don't know if he ever helped either of you guys, but I remember Prison of Elders uh, level 32 or whatever it was. I think he he I did think it, he did it by but, himself, is what you're saying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he carried like four or five people. Like, he just rotated through people for that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I saw a little thing about this beta guild guided beta thing. What the hell is that? Anyone else? Okay, just, I actually... Just throw it out. I, I actually had to look it up because when you had mentioned it earlier, I'm like, I think I saw something about that. Um, a couple... Uh, select players from fire teams and other random RNG things or whatever. We're given 12 tickets currently for this random paradise. Beta. Yes. And it's all it really is, is basically um, kind of a built in uh, LFG uh, setup. It's basically you can you go into it and you sign up. Do you want to be a guide 
or seeker. And if you're a seeker, it's basically you're going to get sherpaed through certain things. And if you're a guide, you're the one doing the sherpa reading. Huh. So then what are the tickets for? The tickets are right now uh, for the beta. You're given 12 tickets to try it out. Uh, once you're out of the tip, you have to use a ticket in order to um, put in for being a seeker or a, uh, a guide. And then once your tickets are used, then that's it. You're done with the beta. Oh, so you can't give the tickets away. They're just no. they're for you. Yes. I believe it's only seekers that need ticket, actually. Oh, then it could be seekers. Because the way it works is seekers are sit like if you're on your own, you want to like attempt the nightfall. You select, uh, you 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 put yourself in as a seeker, and the game will match you with two people, who've usually clan pe- clan people, who've like decide did they want to guide a, f- a third, and it just kind of like just makes you together. Uh, now, does it put you with people in your clan or anyone? Anyone, any. It's. It seems to me like guided needs to be two people who are in the same clan. Mm-hmm. They select that and then they get put with a third, which is kind of open to anyone. So it's like, it's kind of like, it's kind of designed so that people by themselves don't really have like the people to work with for like the raid or the nightfall or the things like that. They yeah. can still end up doing the harder stuff. They just end up doing it with random people. It's, oh, I see. It's yeah. quite interesting because you click on it and you get like this list of requirements. It's like you need to be you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared to be uh, to be helpful to um, to listen to others and all that kind of thing. Like it really, it really basically says like you can't just you can't just select this and be an arsehole. <laughs> yeah, I think it it even said like in like the um in the in the setup or the release for it. Please use microphones. Yeah, it's not really. Mic surprise. Huh. Interesting. Because I did get one in my little mailbox thing in the game, but I don't know what the hell. Yeah, you get the tickets. It's so weird. You get the tickets, but they don't actually show up anywhere. So I spent ages going from my inventory, like, what were these ticket things? Where did they go? Hmm. Yeah, I got got those tickets too, and I'm like, what? And where where do I get my pre-order gun from? Oh, the cold heart? Yeah. You have to hit level 20. Yep, I did that. Finish the story. Oh, I didn't do that part yet. Yeah. Yeah, you have to finish the story, and I think you either get it from Shaxx or you get it at the Postmaster. I think it's Postmaster. I I, I definitely got something from Postmaster. I, no, I have to say, I really, really into the Crucible this time. I mean, I was before, but I yeah. feel like Crucible on this, I don't know, it just it's just a lot more fun, and I can't figure out why. I, I was I was the exact same way, which was helpful because it mean, meant I could get the uh, multiplayer achievement out of the way. <laughs> but yeah, I can't. I was I was like I was leaning towards it. I was like, this doesn't feel awful. I feel like I can kind of feel what I'm doing. Yeah. But I also feel like it might be because everyone else is kind of in the same boat. There's uh, nothing. Wow. Like I feel like in about a couple of months when there's people. Because you get the people who play Destiny and play the Crucible like crazy. Yeah, and that's all they do, yeah. Yeah. I feel like eventually those people are going to like find their find their perfect weapons and their perfect Yeah, I like, gotta say this. Submachine gun. Submachine gun is the weapon to use. Yeah. That and a lot of I've noticed a lot of people, they're not using sniper rifles. They're using um, scout rifles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much been my go-to. That's, that's something I'm glad. I'm glad they, um... I'm glad with power weapons they kind of switched up and put, like, like things like snipers and uh, shotguns in that category. Yeah. Just because it stops people from, like, getting hold of them and dominating. The, mm-hmm. the thing that I yeah. hate... The thing that I always absolutely hated about uh, Crucible was the person who would get their shotgun and just, like, slide around corners and get you. you can't even, like, get them. <laughs> <laughs> Randall never did that. He he said so. He said as much as last week. <laughs> Ever. Ever. No. Yeah, I gotta say the crucible for me. It's it's still a hit or miss with me. Like, I I still don't know how I feel about the the four the four man fire teams or the four person fire teams. 
I got to say, Quick Play was a little bit more forgiving than competitive because I did, I actually did Quick Play on my own earlier in the week when the when we were on a break from Team Dad Jokes, just to like kind of get it out of the way. But we did the competitive last night, me, Dave, and uh, George, and we had like one rando on it. And rando, not Randall. Yes. <laughs> Be the uh, surface, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was. Oh God, that was so unforgiving. Like, it was brutal. Really? It it was really brutal. Really. We did not win a. I think we won one round in the first match we played, and I think that's because the guys felt bad for us. But other than that, if we didn't have that one, we would have lost like every single one of our every single one of our rounds. Wow. See now, for some reason, I like playing uh, competitive more. I don't know why. Not sure. Because really, I mean, it, I. Other than the people who are playing, it's this. Oh, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? Because you're not uh, getting the level. You're not either one of them. You're not getting the level perks. Uh, I guess. I suppose. I suppose being a lone person in the competitive playlist, you're getting paired with three people who are very um, competitive. Go for it. Yeah. Maybe. And I just know that competitive, you get better possible rewards. Maybe. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Same thing with playing like um, Call of Duty and sometimes Battlefield. I feel like playing on the hardcore mode is just better to play. At least like when in Call of Duty, because with there are so many insane, crazy, stupid perks in Call of Duty that if you play normal, you can pretty much unload a shotgun into someone and they won't die, <sighs> and then they'll turn around and shoot you in the face, and then you're dead. But with like hardcore mode, it's you know one or two shots from whatever, and that's it. So yeah, the thing we call a duty nowadays. So you shoot a guy, and then suddenly they do a weird backflip in the air because they're made on robots. And then they shoot a gun that turns you into pink sparkles. Then they dance on right. your corpse or something. Yes. Well, at like, least this next time in November, we're going back to uh, World War Two. So yeah, they're no not more... going to stick robots in there. No more robots. But 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 will they still have something that if you shoot them will turn you into pink sparkles? And I don't, yeah, I can't see them doing that. Can't That's why. <laughs> so I did get the pink sparkle thing for Destiny to like show up when I, you know, spawn. Nice. Yeah. I got that. I yeah. I do like all that. I like, I enjoy the level of customization. Like, I like that every time you level up past 20, you get like a, a, a blight Ingram. Mm hmm. I understand that it's, that it is like set up to be microtransactions. But you have no reason to touch that if you don't want to. So I don't know why people are no. complaining about it. See, so yeah, might... I mean, if you if you power level or you play a lot, you're going to be getting those things left and right. Yeah. See, micro cosmetic microtransactions, I have no problem with at yeah, all. They're, not, they're nothing. They're not yeah, anything. They're like, you know what? If you like if you like that skin or helmet or whatever, then who cares? It's the pay to win is when it gets aggravating. <laughs> Yeah, because, yeah, I, I still don't think Destiny's really gotten to that point, because, yes, you can get the armor set, but the armor still drops at, like, a power level of 10. So, yeah, it's, yeah. you still... The stuff that you have to, like, infuse to make useful. Yeah, I mean, they do have mods in there, but you can also buy the mods from uh, Banshee, so it's, like, again, it's really, like, a matter of, like, you're really... It's, all, it's also all random anyway. Like, yeah. You can get those mods... Just by luck, anyway. And now, how do I get my little uh, space motorcycle? Uh, what do you mean, the speeder? Yeah, you will get. You should be able to get one through story progression, but if you, you should, I think if you happen to get one to drop at Eververse, it, you can equip it whenever. I think you you're guaranteed to unlock one after you complete the story. You like speak to Holiday, and she gives you one that she made for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Besides that, it is just from um, Eververse people. Wow. Has anyone gotten a new ship? Yeah, I've got a new ship. I've, nice. I've got, yeah, I've gotten a few from Eververse, along with nice. a couple of uh, nice. sparrows. Yeah, I got like a I got like a ship, and at first I was like, oh god, this is just plain white, this is boring. And then I realized you could... Shitter! Um, 
you could do Shadus to that too. And it's like, okay. Now, um, how do you guys feel about the shaders? I know a lot of people are mad about that. I don't care. But, like the shaders are only like a one-time use and you get five at a time and you got to pay to put them on kind of thing. Well, I mean, the shader, I mean, I in, hate it. in that aspect, I mean, it's really just kind of making it, um, oh, what is it? Those, the light effects that the, um, the armors had in, uh, in Destiny 1. Thank oh, you. Oh, there it. he is. Thank you, Randall. The chroma. <laughs> I mean, it's basically just like chroma now. So, I mean, it, but at least you know what you're getting. You don't have to, like, spend 2,000 glimmer just to get the red roll. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm okay with it because while, yes, it does have a vest palette, I'm really only using about, like, three or four of them. <laughs> And really? I and I'm fairly stacked on those, so it's like, all right. Yeah, it's just it's not, it's not something you need to do either. Like, like the thing with a lot of games nowadays, all this customization stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you can play Halo and not change the way your Spartan looks. You can play <laughs> Overwatch and not like add an emote or a spray to any character and just still play the game the exact same way. Like, yeah. none of this changes the way you play or makes it e makes it easier, makes it better. It's just like. It's just adding personality to the game. Yep. Yeah, really. So, like... Mm, and yeah. I like it. Very like, well said. Yeah. I, lo I love the level of customization you get in games now. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you think there's too much customization in some games? Uh, not at all. Like... Uh, so, you don't think, like, Skyrim is, like, too insane? Or Mass Effect? Where you're, like, changing their cheekbones? <laughs> Not really, because that's just additional options. You can you can just like you can randomize that stuff. You can just skip through parts of it. You don't have to do every option. True. True. Yeah. The I way mean, I like... see it, oh, sorry, here we go. Is you get sorry, you get a uh, you get the customization level that GTA Four had, which was mm -hmm. just like a, a, a selection of default looking characters that you just picked. Yep, and you put on and, some like, sunglasses, <laughs> and you just did like sw slight uh, tweaks to them. Yep. And then you've got, like, what GTA is now. GTA 5 and just, like, billions of clothing options. You can just cover yourself with tattoos, face paint. You can do so, all kinds of stuff. Are people still playing GTA? Oh, uh, yeah. They have... I'd, like, I'd like to do another GTA night. Oh. They, they recently... The problem with a lot of GTA stuff now is their... Um, I, don't, I don't know the exact reason why, but a lot of their... Uh, content updates for um, the multiplayer is geared towards parties of four. Okay. It's, it's a, it is weird, because I can understand why with GTA, because they are they do kind of want to push towards that kind of thing, but it's similar to Heist, like you'll get like a you get like a weird like story progression where it's like different missions involving these brand new unique vehicles and then like the payout is that you can buy the vehicles for a better month for a better value. Mm -hmm. So hmm. like if you, so like it pays to like play through it, and then buy the new vehicles afterwards. So because you, you're just saving money, and like you get money for doing the missions. So it all kind of works out. It's just like when you're a lone person and you want to hop on GTA and see what the new update is, and then uh, realize that it's vehicles that are way out of your price range and missions that you can't do <laughs> unless you get three other random people who want to do them too and that don't really happen yeah right huh i mean it's there and it's like there's a load of stuff to gta to do like if if like james said right. like we have to like jump into it but like until but it's just kind of like there's all this stuff here and like not really much to can't really touch it unless i I was randomly three other people wake up and decide they also want to play GTA. Yeah, yeah. And there's there is a lot to do in that game, an insane amount to do in that game. Yeah, I played it. You know, I went through this whole story, did some other stuff, but I didn't touch like half of the things you can do in that game. Like I didn't, I didn't wind up buying you know the expensive movie theater and a golf course. I never oh, yeah. figured out. I never figured out what's going on with those crazy people in the mountains and the aliens in the desert. So. Yeah, some. God, that's a weird. It's a weird thing with GTA. Like it kind of freaks you out some of the like details and stuff like that. Like the weird, um, like you said, like the weird like conspiracy people and all that kind of shit. Yeah. 
I do know. I do know for a fact that that, that weird place in the um, mountains where you can take people, and then they'll pay you for them. Like you, you could kidnap people, take them there, and they'll give you money and thank you for your helping. It's like a weird cult thing. In the uh, multiplayer, you can drive to that area, and you're just fight an endless wave of naked people. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Really, kind of weird. It was like, it, it's like that, like, it was like that the jump from Xbox 360 to Xbox One did. Like, in Xbox 360, they had, like, there was no nudity in the multiplayer. I don't know if it was because they couldn't handle it or whatever, like, graphic wise. <laughs> but for some reason, on the Xbox One version, the strippers are now topless and the, there's naked people you can find in the um, mountains. Like, that seems to be one of the weird jumps that Xbox One offered for GTA 5 online is that now nudity could be online. <laughs> <laughs> Play GTA 5, now it's nudity. <laughs> oh, man. So, there are some other things that got released today that weren't games, but they involve movies. They involve one, was a movies? Mo- one was a movie that was, that was a game that's based off a game. The other one is a series based off a comic. I have anyone's... no idea what Eva is. <laughs> really? So, there's a new trailer for Laura Croft, Tomb Raider. Oh, yes. Um, yes. The new, new movie. Uh, I've got a, uh, I want a rant. Oh, I want okay. A, I want oh, people. oh yes. yes. Okay. I'm sorry, go uh, ahead. And the, the other thing <laughs> was the Netflix series by Marvel for The oh, Punisher. Yes, the Punisher. So I want to, um, I want to touch on uh, Tomb Raider. Sure. Uh, well, that's a different podcast, the Touching Tomb Raider, but yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, go right ahead. I say I'm just uh, thinking about touching. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> my. But, like, <laughs> this is the thing. I've seen, like, weird comments. First off, I've seen people saying, like, I don't know why they have to reboot things. The original Tomb Raider movies are perfect, because they're fucking not. Uh, no, they're not. I <laughs> Anyone who said... They're not. Like, they're not. <laughs> anyone who's saying like Angelina Jolie is the perfect Tomb Raider? Not really. She looked like a um, she looked like the kind of Tomb Raider you'd get like a, a cosplay a cosplayer doing for her Patreon after they subscribe a bunch of money. <laughs> now wait 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 wait, my sound got screwed up. Are you talking about Angelina Jolie or the current the Tomb Raider now? We're talking about the Angelina Jolie overly sexual sex. Sexualized Tomb Raider. Okay. Okay. Well, well, just real quick, Jamie. It was based on the over-sexualized Lara Croft to begin with. So, just saying on that. I also like to say that it came out. Those movies came out around the same time that the Halle Berry Catwoman came out. And if you look at her costume and the Tomb Raider costume, you could really see them two characters teaming up. <laughs> Again, that is a different podcast and movie. <laughs> But is that I've seen I've seen a bunch of people commenting there about how like Hollywood has to reboot everything. Well, it's yeah. They've, I don't it, have a problem with MO. reboots when they when they know what they're doing. Like it is a reboot. It the movie is a reboot yeah. of a of a television series based on a book. Right. And yet this version of it is the best version of it that can possibly exist. Yes. Now, in now the logic people have about how reboots shouldn't be a thing and Hollywood is an original. Mm-hmm. When, when it's done right, there's no thing wrong with that. This is true. It's a very valid point. Yeah, like sometimes, sometimes you don't get things right on the first try. Right. But to say right. like to but to say to someone that's it you're done you gave it one shot it didn't work don't be don't do another one. Yep. It's just not the way to go. Like no, like uh, the the reboot of RoboCop. Yeah, that wasn't good. Yeah. No. The, the reboot of RoboCop that didn't work. Are you saying are you saying to people don't ever try RoboCop again? No, just learn from the mistakes. Yeah, just don't just do don't do it again. <laughs> yeah. The thing with something like RoboCop is that like. As a, as like visual effects and stuff like that go, gets better and better, you could make a Robocop that looked gritty and realistic and proper, 
but still mm. be like a weird blend of CGI and um, real or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like even a uh, even Jurassic Park. Like the original Jurassic Park's great because it's um it's all uh, CGI and stuff like that. But then Jurassic World, it's all no. I mean the original Jurassic Jurassic Park's mostly animatronics and it looks great because they they exist and all that. The Jurassic World CGI, but like uh, honestly, I think the CGI in Jurassic World was pretty great, pretty good. Like it's it, it just as CGI gets better and better, like it's worth open. It's worth like revisiting things that could be a lot better. Yeah, like I hate like I, for some reason I'm British, so occasionally I get the end. <laughs> I get, I get the, uh, I get the need to rewatch all the Harry Potter movies. Okay. And I hate that Fantastic Beasts is the best looking Harry Potter movie because it's the most recent one. Like, I hate, I hate watching the first Harry Potter movie and seeing them fight that troll because it just looks awful. <laughs> or the Basilisk, or like, um, and then kind of after that, it kind of looks okay and passable. The first two look pretty damn awful now, but like. Hmm. So, like, if you could reboot something and, like, clear everything up and, like, add things that weren't available, weren't uh, weren't possible before, just, I, I have no problem with it as long as it's, as long as it's done in a way where it's something new. Like, if you're going to reboot something, like, take advantage of the new technology and the new features that weren't available when the original came out. That's kind of my point with that. But, um... Going back to Tomb Raider. Um, so the actress who's playing Tomb Raider is not like a a big name star kind of thing. She hasn't got like right. For what I know, like she's Felicia not, Van Vick. Yeah, Vick she's not, Yeah, she's not someone where you read the name and you associate it with someone with something. Mm. Unlike um, unlike Daisy Ridley and uh, Star Wars. Like Daisy Ridley was probably before that, which is probably quite unknown because I never heard of her before that. Yeah. No, yeah. me either. Me either. She's but, probably in something. Yeah, but then she has the Star and she has the Star Wars movie. And so she becomes quite big and everything like that. And then suddenly and suddenly billions and billions of people on the internet begin adding her to every every uh, series ever because she's fresh in their mind. Mm-hmm. Now the Problem with that is, that's how you get another Jennifer Lawrence. Mm. The True, problem with, so Je- it has the problem to be with Jennifer Lawrence <laughs> is she, um, what she, unknown, she jumped into um, Hunger Games. That was her big thing, and then she just started getting put in everything because she, she like exist. She was in the, she had an association. Like people were like, I like the, I liked Hunger Games. I'm going to watch this movie because she's in it. And then mm-hmm. spacing out and out. And before you know it, instead of watching a movie that exists, like, because of the story and everything like that, it's a movie that's based around a single actress. Like, the reason the the X-Men reboot younger cast trilogy, the reason why that's getting, that's always kind of mixed is because they have to find a way of pushing Jennifer Lawrence's character, Mystique, into the forefront in every movie. Even though the character doesn't have like the personality or the story arc to do it so it just seems kind of odd that they trying to do that hmm. yeah but no I, I i completely follow where jimmy's going on this and i i truly do agree because yeah like you were saying with the uh, jennifer lawrence effect it was like all right she was good as someone who kind of failed her way through surviving um like basically a uh, death game and yeah. now it's like all of a sudden okay we're gonna cast her in silver linings playbook and um the x-men. joy x-men and joy Behard and this and that and all that stuff and it was like huh it was like she she was okay in that role but if you really like just break down the character that katniss was in that movie it was she whined and complained about everything. She screamed a lot. 
and she really kind of failed her way to the top. So basically, she was a female Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> and it's like, all of a sudden, now it's like, okay, we're going to give her all these movie roles and, you know, we're going to make her a big star and all. And I will admit, in some things, she has worked out well. Like, I think she got, what, an Academy Award for Silver Linings Playbook and all. Yeah. But it's like... Um, yeah. Really, thank you. I'm just going to correct myself quickly. Yep. X-Men First Class came out before the first Hunger Games. Oh. It did? I'm surprised about that. I feel like Hunger Games happened a lot, lot, lot longer ago than that. But, yeah. Huh. I did not I did not think about that. But honestly, I'm, I, honestly, I thought Hunger Games came first, too. I feel like the point still stands because she still does show up in, like, a bunch of other, other things, kind of. Yeah. I'm also going to say the same thing about Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt actually. Like, because, like, Guardians of the Galaxy was, like, his big, like, like, action movie break kind of thing. Like, before that, he was... Before that, he kind of had the, um... He was the funny guy. Yeah, before that, he was going to, like... He, he was kind of in the realm of, like, the uh, chubby, less, less good-looking sidekick kind of thing, the comic relief character. And then, like, he got... And then, like, he got... He got cast in Guns of the Galaxy, which was like a big break. Must have been like a big break for him, like to be the to be the lead in that. And then he's kind of, and now he's kind of like the male action lead in everything. Oh. And you see a lot of times people like just talk about how they want to do a young Indiana Jones, and they want it to be him. Like the problem with like a big of someone once they get once their name gets big and all this, and they get associated with so many franchises. Is that you don't want to see that like slapped and slapped in front of like a well known an already established character, mm. like like there's certain kind of things like you can only have so many like known you can only have so many like subtitles like I like, once you're like associated as a certain character, it's then kind of weird to like slap another character that you also need to people also need to start associating you with, like if they do a young Indiana Jones. I would prefer mm -hmm. they went for like an actor who could. I feel like I'd prefer like a lesser known actor to be a new Indiana Jones than like, than to like pick one of the like. You someone know, who's already established. Yeah, someone who's already established. Yeah. So uh, one thing I found about interesting about the trailer, that it's pretty much well two things. Uh, one. It, it pretty much looks like the last, not the last, or not the last Tomb Raider, the one before that. The the reboot Tomb Raider kind of thing. Yeah, the rebooted Tomb Raider game. Yeah. I always get confused because there's that one, and then there was like the 20th anniversary one. They came out almost at the same time. <laughs> you, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Craig. Yeah. IGN did a thing where they uh, took the trailer... And they just made it, and they um, added button effects to it to make it like a um, the quick time event. From oh, the really? Yeah. They did. Nice. They recut the trailer as a quick time event. You see her running on the boat. You see B getting tapped, and then A, and then the trigger buttons when she's jumping. Nice. Uh, the other thing I noticed, uh, because I watch Into the Badlands, mm -hmm. there's uh, two people from Into the Badlands in that uh, movie. Huh. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, there's Daniel Yu, blah, blah. Daniel Wu who's the lead in uh, Into the Badlands he's a guy with her on the boat uh, and the other one is uh, Nick Frost who you kind of see really quick and he's got the British accent and the uh, I think he has glasses on typical Nick Frost with his British accent you know <laughs> guy. <laughs> uh, yeah so they are both Into the they are both in Into the Badlands. Uh, I was like, hey, that's them. Yeah. Um, so did anyone see the um, Punisher trailer? I've seen the Punisher trailer, yep. I have not, because I still don't have Netflix. Uh, I, well, mean, I mean, the trailer's on YouTube. No, Netflix. I know, but I just really haven't been following the, um, the Marvel it doesn't, it the doesn't Netflix want to series. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to tease myself with that. With, with that, I cannot watch. If you got a month's worth of Netflix now, you'd be uh, set for like a good month. Yeah. yeah. I just binge watch everything. Like, um, I God. think it was whoever designed that trailer with the music 
and the sound yeah. effects was a genius. Great choice of music. Great choice of music, and with the whole sound effects going with the music yeah. while he's reloading, uh, it yeah, worked really, really well. I thought the sight, the sight, was really like uh, satisfied about the scene where he's charging at the enemy, and he like tilts his gun and fires at a certain angle. They tilts up and shoots him in the head. Oh yeah, because he shot him in the feet yeah. first. Yep. Like um, everything he does is just perfect. I love, the, I love the bit where he's just like, "This is guy on the floor." He just goes, says, it says to go. Do you know anything about my family? I was like, no. He's like, fair enough. Just shoots him in the head. Yep. <laughs> and that's, pr- that's pretty, like, Punisher level stuff. That is. That is. I mean, one time he did shoot off Wolverine's face. Yep. Um, but what I don't, I haven't watched Daredevil in a while, so I didn't see the the episode with him in it. I don't know if either of you have seen it. Well, the I thought, there, I thought he's a, been in a few episodes of has Daredevil. He? Isn't, yeah, isn't it? Isn't the the first four episodes of? I feel like I could spoil. If you're okay with me spoiling this, yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I could spoil it. It's been out here ages. <laughs> the first four are basically like a Punisher versus Daredevil arc. Like they fight, they fight, they have like a big confrontation similar to the comics, where like De- Punisher ties Daredevil up, puts a gun, straps a gun to his hand, and like tries to get Daredevil to like understand how he is and like wants Daredevil to kill this guy after he tells him all the crimes. It's like, you kill him, or you kill me, or I'll kill him. Like, it's that kind of sir kind of thing. Okay. Really kind of cool. And then, like, and then that ends with, like, them having to team up and fight, like, this uh, the Irish mob. And then, like, As one have... does. Yeah. It's really cool. And then, like, it ends with them hanging out in, like, a cemetery after this big fight. Uh, Punisher opens up to Daredevil and like just go. It, there's like a full like ten minutes of just like the Punisher just talking about ah paper. Sorry. <laughs> it's like a full just ten minute monologue of just Punisher like just talking about how like how like he like goes for the thing goes like how he came back from the army and he picked up his daughter from school and he's crying the kids are crying everyone's crying it's just... and like this and you see like. Like the d- dead, I will just like try like crying and break it down because like it's really sad. Like he talks about how he picked up, he came home from like the first few years he went to his daughter's school and picked her up and everything like that. And then the next day they go to a fair and then he's, that's where his family gets killed. Oh, and like he, the whole thing is like his family got killed in the crossfire of three different gangs. So he's like slowly going through the gangs, like, he takes out the motorcycle gang, he takes out the Irish mob, and then that's, like, and then, like, there's a bit more of a conspiracy to it. So, like, after that, uh, after that, uh, Punisher gets, um, Punisher gets arrested, and he goes on tra- trial, and this is the point where, uh, Matt Murdock starts, um, representing him as he's, as, you know, Matt Mur- Murdock lawyer. Mm. So it's really cool, because you've got this, you've got this, like, Punishers up there, and, like, he's got, like, Matt Murdock's defended him. Like, he doesn't know that Matt Murdock's dead, but he's still there. And, like, there's this whole bit, like, Matt Murdock just goes up to the stand, and he's like, I can call you Frank, right? And, like, Punisher just has this thing where he just goes blank. And, like, you can tell that he's thinking, and you can tell that he works it out. Mm-hmm. And then he just, like, and he just goes along with it. Like, he doesn't even, he doesn't, like, like, he never, he never, like, acknowledges it. You could just tell that he, he was smart enough to figure it out just by the voice. Oh. And then you get that, and then that. So they're yeah. representing they're representing him, and they're trying to like play off that like he was shot in the head during yep. his time in the military, and the, that could be causing his anger issues and stuff like that, and so that he needs help instead of just being arrested and all this. And then just as they're trying to get him to go along with it, he just goes nuts and just starts declaring that he killed these people because he likes it, and that he'll do it all again. That he's the big bad punisher and all this. Ooh. But then it turns out it's because he was approached by a guy working for the Kingpin, who's still in prison from Daredevil season one. So they go, so uh, Punisher gets taken to the prison. He meets up with Kingpin, and Kingpin basically has this. Kingpin basically says this. He says, "I rule, I'm in charge of this prison now. I rule. I run this prison. I can get out whenever I want to, but I don't want to get out and have to fight my way to the top." I want to let you out to take out the people I, 
to take out the people that we both want taken out so that when I get out of here, I can claim victory without having to fight, which is really yeah. kind of cool. So then, like, huh. P- Punisher gets out and he, like, tracks down the last few people who are, like, you, you know, who've kind of scorned him kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then he helps the uh, Daredevil out with, like, the second subplot because there's all this hand stuff going on as well that, like, Punisher has no connection to. And then, like, he just helps Daredevil to, like, repay him. And then that kind of ends with him, like, um, the series ends with him spray painting the skull on, like, some body armor and, like, taking all these weapons. He burns down his family house to, like, I think, like, to, like, signify that Frank Castle's dead and it's just the Punisher. Yeah. And he just kind of walks off into the sunset holding a minigun. <laughs> nice. Damn. But what they do in Daredevil Season 2, which I love, is that from the get-go, they're just like, because at first he's, they don't actually know who he is. They just know that there's a guy going around killing people, a one-man army kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So they just immediately go with the media is calling him the Punisher, and like, and just because of the way he adopts it and the way like he, everyone uses it, it just works. And like, it's just so much better than like, than like tiptoeing around it and like trying to find a way to like subtly bring it in. The best way to introduce a cat, a, a superhero's like name in that even if it's like a bit over the top it's just to have like it it's just to have like it's being said and then just be like screw it i'll take that i'll accept it <laughs> like as much as i like daredevil as a character there's a few too many times where they refer to him as devil as hell's kitchen instead of just daredevil probably because like daredevil's a little bit cheesier yeah like they, yeah. Like they make fun people make fun of iron fist to keep declaring himself as the immortal iron fist but at least he calls himself by his superhero name a good amount of times. Like, if you make That's a, a super- point, yeah. <laughs> like you get the um, you get the uh, Green Arrow show. Arrow. It took him four seasons to refer to himself as Green Arrow. Really? Yeah. Before that, he was the Hood. Then he was just Arrow for a bit. Like, you could tell they were like sort of uncomfortable to get towards that point. But like. You just need to do it. You just need to, like, say the name and you just need to accept it and it works. Like, the net, the Marvel Netflix shows, you've got Luke Cage, you've got Iron Fist, you've got Daredevil and Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones and Luke Cage are characters that use their real names for their names. But they still, like, manage to, like, they still manage to find ways to make fun of the uh, or more comic booky parts. Like, Luke Cage has this relationship with this guy that he's, um, who knows about his powers and just like accepts him. And the guy just refers to him as Power Man all the time, which was like <laughs> Luke Cage's alter ego in like the 80s, I think. Yeah, that was his, huh. I think that was his original one. Yeah. Like back and they, they, even, they even do the bit where Luke Cage escapes from prison, he swims to shore and like he grabs clothes and he basically grabs like an open top yellow t shirt and like trousers and he's got the headband on. He just looks in the, looks in the window and he's like, I look like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it still exists, and, like, as long as that stuff's still, like, canon in, like, the more gritty, like, stories kind of thing. Like, they try and make, they try and modernize the characters, but as long as they still manage to, like, make out that, yeah, he did briefly dress like this, and he did, he, and he has gone by this name. It makes it feel like they're not ashamed of being a comic book movie, like, certain adaptions can be. Like yeah. uh, like the Fantastic Four movie that came out a few years ago, for instance, where they were God. too embarrassed to refer to themselves as Fantastic Four. They had to, yeah. they almost said it, and they cut away to it written. Hmm. Yeah, because I mean, like, even if you look at the um, the Marvel movies, like going back to Iron Man, when he was in the cave, basically he built the Mark One was basically the original big, bulky like Iron Man suit. Like, even the yep. face mask was, like, you know, spot on when, in Captain America when Steve Rogers was, you know, first got his powers and they, like, didn't really know what to do with him. He when they put him in... He costume and he hit, hit, punched Hitler, like, some of the early stuff in the comics. Yeah, well, issue one of Captain America was him decking Hitler on the uh, <laughs> on yeah. the cover. But, yeah, like Jimmy was saying, the when he was in the serial, the costume was his original costume, the... You know the big boots, the the wings on the the thing on the yeah. headpiece and everything. 
the thing about a comic book movie, it a comic book movie feels right when they just acknowledge the universe and everything around it. Like, like watching Spider Man Homecoming. The great thing about Spider Man Homecoming is that like all the characters have their respective names. Like, like he's referred to as Spider Man. Vulture's called Vulture, I think. Like, there's this whole bit where like um where Vulture's having a go at the Shocker, and he's just like. Well, you're calling yourself the Shocker. You think that makes you tough? You're big bad Shocker running around, <laughs> and then he, and then like he kills that guy because that's not the real Shocker. And then he turns to the real Shocker, and goes, I "Guess you're the Shocker now." <laughs> and they have like um, they have like the character uh, Prowler, and they um, and they have like, or at least that's that's who he is in the comics. And he's just a street criminal. But then like uh, under, like they have these police records, and his alias is Pl- Prowler. And they like acknowledge, and they reference his uh, nephew, who's uh, Miles Morales, who's the second Spider-Man. Oh. And, and they bre- and briefly you see the cat, you see um, the guy who becomes the uh, Scorpion, and he's literally got a Scorpion tattoo on his face. Nice. Like, like the thing about it when they're not afraid to acknowledge to reference their names, even when they're dumb. Like that's the great, that's the good thing with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Is they have the cat to taste the face, who is the character from the comics, and they basically just make the make fun of how dumb that character's name is. But like, yeah. uh, but like, it's so much more preferable when they do that for when they're like sort of embarrassed to like acknowledge who the character's meant to be. Mm-hmm. Like, they're like, they're like, yeah, we'll make the character look like this, but we won't <laughs> exactly say that name because that name would just be too ridiculous. It's like, no, just go it, just go it, go the full way, people. People won't. If people watch him, are watching a comic book movie, they're not gonna like throw their hands up in the air and goes, "All right, this guy's called Red Skull. That's dumb." <laughs> this, guy, this guy with a literal Red Skull called Red Skull. That's just convenient. That's just stupid. <laughs> that's taking me out of it. Although I do have to say, the first time I showed Pete um, Captain America: The First Avenger, and he saw the Red Skull, he goes, "Who's that?" I'm like it's a Red Skull. Why is he called that? I looked at him and I go, seriously? Granted, he's four, but still, it's, it makes it's sense. obvious. What I like about that is I like the fact that they know, they know who the Red Skull's real name is and everything like that. But as soon as he peels off his face, they're just like, yeah, if you're going to look like that, we might as well just refer to you as that. Like, we're not going to call you anything else. You're basically mm-hmm. the Red Skull now. Ah, uh, yes. It's just no, the no, Netflix. Like... So, yeah. yeah. No, no that was all. Uh, that was all well said. And Netflix has a lot, um, a lot of Marvel stuff going on. It's just, yeah, it look, it looks good. I wonder, like, because they said like the Defenders, which is, which just happened, was like the end of their phase one of the Marvel universe, the Marvel Netflix universe kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Punish is going to be like kicking off something bigger, or if it's just going to be more standalone. Hmm. Because the thing is, once again, it's New York. Like that seems to be the big thing. It's like the defenders is basically all these different characters existing in the same place, defending specific areas or doing their own thing. Which people people are throwing their arms up in the air and they're like, "Why is it always New York?" And it's like, "Well, in the comics, it's always New York. These are all characters that operate in New York in the comic comics. Except it's not just these ones. It's like eighty more as well. Yeah, like Spider Man is doing his thing." Daredevil's doing his thing, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Punisher, and then there's probably like the X Men and the Fantastic Four all just flying around doing their own thing all in the same world. All in the same street. Like, you wonder why New York has crime when literally <laughs> you walk around a corner and there's a different superhero. Yeah, that's true. Superheroes for New York really tend to have just about everything covered. They do. That's why I kind of yeah. like. Um, that's why I like with uh, with what they've done with the Avengers is they've moved them because originally they're operating out of Stark Tower, which was like in the middle of New York, and now they've made yeah. it like be a facility like hidden hidden away. It kind of makes it more like feel like they could just jump anywhere as opposed to like I just always imagine it'd been it'd been weird like something goes off somewhere in the world and then suddenly like planes are flying out of a tower in the middle of New York every time a disaster happens. And I just. Can you imagine how annoyed, how annoyed you'd be if you lived in New York near Stark Tower? 
and like so, and like suddenly you see this news report it's like there's a there's a um there's a hydra attack or something or on site and then suddenly a plane takes off and like seven iron man suits because iron man has to travel with like to change your clothes or whatever yeah <laughs> but that's the thing i love because that happened in, that was in uh, spider-man homecoming actually it was the whole big thing at the end was like all the stuff was being moved from Stark Tower, and there's this giant plane sitting on top of the landing pad. It's like that's got to be so inconvenient. Like there's got to be like people in like air traffic control, like then trying to like clear stuff to make sure the military doesn't start thinking there's a plane in the middle of New York for some reason. Let's stop it. Like no, no, it's <laughs> okay. It's just Tony Stark again. It's just Tony oh, Stark. God damn it! Moving his collection <laughs> of like superhero stuff. He's got his Ultron head and stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, I never saw that one with Ultron. Uh, in my, my opinion, it wasn't as bad as everyone made it seem. It was as bad, it just had, like... To be fair, it was like a comic book, because the way comic books work is they, is they do kind of, like, branch themselves off. They're like, if you want to continue this storyline, watch the next... Read the full <laughs> comic. If you want to see this storyline, read this cassette of comics. So it's yeah. like, choose your own adventure. Kind of. It's like... It's like when you read the big, like... Uh, meet up comic books like the big things like Civil War comics and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. they don't just start and end in that series. They're like they have repercussions all over the place that you then mm-hmm. need to choose which ones you want to follow. Same thing with the movies. Like the thing with the movies is that most people know they're going to end up watching all the movies. Yeah. So they're kind of outraged when they feel like they're watching a movie that's basically trying to entice them to watch future movies, even though they already are. <laughs> like not everyone is. Like some people are going to walk into an Avengers movie and watch that and not realize that other movies exist. Yeah. They're like them setting up and them establishing that other stuff exists in this universe. It's just like a way of like making sure that other people realize they need to check other things out. Like I feel sorry for anyone who's going to go into Avengers Infinity War and not realize that Guardians of the Galaxy exists in that same universe. So, they're like guns. They guys see. Oh, that probably that's probably not this. That's probably like the Fantastic Four saying a different world. Yeah. And suddenly they show. Suddenly they they they're a spaceship and they're a big part of the movie. You're like oh. Oh, who's that? Like, why is there a talking tree next to Captain America? <laughs> I don't know. Or or they're going to be like, why does Thor have short hair? And why is he friends with the Hulk? Or why does Hulk speak? Because they didn't realize why, they needed. Why a is the raccoon talking? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, but yeah, I was going to say just because I kind of caught up to it and the season finale is actually going to be this weekend. Has anyone been watching day five from Rooster Teeth? I have not. My, uh, my goal was it. So the problem with Netflix is Netflix is the best way I find to watch things like Uh, binge watch formula. So now I kind of like wait until things come out fully before. Uh, well, I mean, I, if, I, if they're things like that, if they're like, if they're like where like there's a continuation kind of thing, like a series, uh, I feel like it's best to work to watch all in one go. So that's what I kind of wait for. Well, I mean, I had been I had been waiting for season two of day five to come out for like so long, especially after waiting so long for the first season. I did actually kind of like slow up on it. Like I waited for a bunch of a couple of episodes to come out this way because I'm like I know if I'm going to watch one, I'm going to want to watch another. But yeah. I kind of caught up, and thankfully it's this Sunday. But holy shit, Josh Flanagan is honest to god an amazing writer. Like Rooster Teeth really found freaking gold with that guy. Because besides. 10 and 11 Little Roosters, which I thought was like a great little miniseries that they did. D5 has been on par with some of like the best drama series that I've seen on network television. Like if you guys have not watched this yet, go back, watch season one, enjoy it, soak it in, start watching season two. I mean, like I seriously got so into it this afternoon. I'm watching the the last episode and i actually had an audible gasp because <laughs> i was i was not prepared for what the fuck just happened i'm sitting there going oh god no no why no hmm. 
Like, I got that into it. And I haven't done that in, like, for a network show in years. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Kind of what you want, though, with a show. You need that oh, yeah. level of engagement. Yeah, so, I mean, that I, I highly recommend. I mean, I know a lot of us really don't imbibe the Rooster Teeth content anymore, but if you still have a first membership, definitely check out D5. It is so worth it. <laughs> so you're saying it's worth watching, is what you're saying. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, well, guys, I think we uh, I think we hit our hour mark. I think um, I think we just made a podcast. Woo-hoo. How do you feel about that? I I feel stuffy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, uh, Jamie, yeah. thank you uh, for staying awake. Always being on the podcast again. Hopefully, you had uh, you have time to sleep and drink some tea. In that in that order, yes. Sleep in first. that order. Though I I've heard that if you take if you drink coffee or caffeine and then take a nap, it actually wakes you up more. Because it takes like 20, 30 minutes for the caffeine to go through your system. When that time you'll be sleeping. So when you get up, you'll actually be more awake. Uh, so basically make sure to go to sleep just bef- just right. after taking your coffee before. Yes. Because after a certain amount of time, you won't be able to anymore. Correct. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> uh, James, thank you for being here. Always. <laughs> Thank you. And Should Randall. Took my line, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Randall, thank you for being here somewhere in the oh, ether. Oh, yeah. There he is. And thank you again, folks, for downloading and listening to this podcast. Uh, remember to check out teamdebot.com where you will see links to the podcast, links to the video podcast. Um, we're a little bit behind this week, just for some video editing issues I had. So those will be coming back very shortly. Um, you'll also find the comic pull list by Jake. And you will also find the Loot Crate reviews done by Sir Jamie himself. Complete with pictures. Yep, just waiting for it to show up, and I'll get on the next one. See that? There you go. Uh, also, um, if you are interested in fantasy football the NFL, football in general, beer, or other random things. You can listen to my other podcast, uh, Fig Nuts DFS. Uh, we talk about fantasy football, DraftKings, uh, you know, who you should put in your lineup, things like that. You can also check us out on uh, Big Butt, yeah, Big Butts, yeah, ha ha ha, whoo. Fig Nuts DFS.com, uh, where you'll find links to us on Facebook and Twitter and iTunes and such. Uh, once again, my name is Craig. This has been the official Teen to Bob podcast number 210. And remember, folks, don't be a hero. Good night. <laughs>